I'm here with John Ramdean. It is Fight News Now, and it is time to go all over all of the news. And Ramdean, right at the top of the list. We're going to chat about it later this week. Dana White at the Republican National Convention. We're awesome. Canadians. We're just innocent bystanders that's here right. watching the carnival. Yeah, that's what it comes down to, is just seeing this train wreck unfold. Can't wait. Well, we have some fights to discuss. Let us start off with... Uh, some Canadian news, I guess, for our viewers in Vancouver, British Columbia. The Fox event will be happening there uh, at the Rogers Center, on, or Rogers Arena, rather, August 27th. And we got a rematch between Jim Miller and Joe Lozon, a rematch from UFC 155 in 2012. On that night, which was one of the more bloodier fights you have seen in the UFC's lightweight history, Jim Miller got his arm raised, and both men are coming off wins at UFC 200. Uh, do you like this rematch? Was it necessary? Yeah, I, yeah I like it. I think uh, stylistically, the way they match up, uh, they're clearly better fighters than the last time they fought. Their fight IQ is through the roof. And uh, especially what you saw Joe Lozon do to Diego Sanchez in that last fight. Uh, you could see how this would be an exciting fight if you kind of envision what would happen inside of the cage. And, you know, for Vancouver, yes, Anthony Pettis dropping down to 145 pounds is intriguing. But I think the fight fans in Vancouver, they want guaranteed action. And Jim Miller and Lozon, I think, will provide that for them. Yeah, I mean, you go back to that fight. I think it was a very different time in Jim Miller's career. And I think the jury is somewhat out. I think many people were looking, is this guy on the decline in his career? Then it comes out he was yeah. dealing with Lyme disease, and he's still recovering from that. But he looked outstanding against Takanori Gomi. But yeah, Joe Lozon, that was, a, to me, one of Joe Lozon's finest performances. Not just beating Diego Sanchez, but stopping way, him yeah. in the way he did. I mean, it's a nice... It, to be in an exclusive club with BJ Penn as guys that have stopped Diego Sanchez and Penn did that late into their championship fight, which was in 2009. Yeah, and I mean, it just shows you that uh, Joe Lozon is a fighter that continues to improve. And if you, uh, I'm not sure if you spoke to Joe Lo Lozon in the past, but he's a very intelligent fighter. He kind of has everything mapped out where Diego Sanchez, you know, I think one of the reasons why we think about Diego Sanchez and one of the reasons we love him is because he's been through those wars. Every time you see a Diego Sanchez fight, it's fight of the night because he takes a lot of damage and he does his best to dish out the damage. So Have those uh, wars caught up to Diego Sanchez now that we're seeing him being finished by strikes in the manner of which he has? Or... Was this just something that wasn't his night against who, Joe Lozon? Who knows? I mean, there's times where, you know, I, I think back to a time when I talked to Jens Pulver, the former lightweight champion, and he told me, you know, there's days where you wake up on the Wednesday before a fight and you think to yourself, why can't the fight be today? I feel amazing. I'd be able to beat heavyweights. You hope you feel that way on the day of the fight. There's just so many circumstances uh, surrounding a fighter's performance, and it just uh, what we saw from Diego Sanchez uh, shouldn't reflect his entire career. Also a fight that has been added for September the 17th. It will be the main event in Hidalgo, Texas. Lightweights Michael Johnson and Dustin cool. Poirier, who has been red hot since returning to the lightweight division. He's won four in a row at this point. Lightweight is such a stacked division, John, but Dustin Poirier is quietly, maybe not so quietly, really making a campaign for himself at 155. And Michael Johnson, he's been stalled in his last two fights coming off that loss to Nate Diaz that I had favored him in. So he's Most definitely did, looking yeah. to rebound here, uh, but he's going to have a big task in Dustin Poirier and a five-round fight, no less. Yeah, but this is what you got to do. I think if, if the goal is to become a champion, in order to be a champion, you got to face all those guys in between and we're having this conversation especially lightweight and probably you can say the same thing with 145 and 170 pounds whether you're the number 20 guy or you're the number three guy you could see how you know the, the way fighters match up 20 could beat number four and four would lose to 16 and you know what I mean it's all over the place because of their, their skills and everybody is so evenly matched that if you want to get a crack at the title if you're Dustin Poirier and you want to get your shot at the championship you have to take out Michael Johnson. It can't be a decision. You have to go, you have to look impressive. He has to look more impressive than he did against Joe Duff. I think he's also one of those fighters that has benefited. I mean, he was killing himself to get to yeah. 145, and you hear from fighters who will discuss that the fight becomes the weigh-in, and just making weight, and suddenly the actual fight becomes secondary. I think that was kind of an issue for him at 145, and not only fighting at 155, you also have the new weigh-in policies that we don't know if that will apply to Texas for this card, but I know the UFC is trying to get all of the commissions to follow suit. And why wouldn't they? They should be. Yeah. I think it's just the state of the art for, for weight cutting at this point, and Dustin Poirier, I think that benefits him greatly. And is this someone that you can see having 
championship upside? Does he have, uh, has he shown enough of that skill that we could see him? Because a win over Michael Johnson yeah. five in a row, you're catapulting yourself in that division. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. And when you were in Vegas, you talked to a whole bunch of fighters who talked about the weight cut. And one of the things they talked about is the quality of fights that you're going to get. They said, simply put, that the, the better we feel, the better entertainment the fans are going to get. And Dustin Poirier, when he is on his A game, when he is fresh, there are very few fighters in the entire organization are as exciting as Dustin Poirier. Last thing before we wrap up, uh, at the time of this recording, it's John Jones' birthday. He also broke his silence and went on Twitter responding to a lot of fans. Was it a smart choice to, to speak about this, or should he have kept quiet? What, what do you think? Yeah, Be I, our crisis management Yeah, yeah no, I think John Jones, because of everything, the way that people feel about John Jones, there are a lot of supporters, but there are all, a lot of people that do not like the way that John Jones does things. I think that he should have had all of his eggs in his, back, in his basket, Talk to his people before making a statement. Yes, it must be very frustrating, but you gotta, you got to do the right thing. And again, John Jones isn't known for doing the right thing. That does it for us, but be sure to tune in on Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time for a full hour as we will be looking ahead to this Saturday's card from the UFC in Chicago, Illinois, headlined by Holly Holm and Valentina Shevchenko.